Huge thank you to Loot Rush for partially sponsoring this contest. Does your deck need an extra oomph from a card that's just outside your price range? Renting from Loot Rush is simple. Just sign up with my referral code in the description and complete a few tasks to increase your rental limit and then begin renting for free for a limited time with coupon code nz free trial. Now let's get on with the video. Alright, hello again. This contest was honestly a blast. We were able to see some wild cards that took a lot of creativity and pushed some limits. Unfortunately, pushing certain limits created a card that was not only too difficult to rank, but would also not function properly in the game. In the Discord, I stressed to everyone the importance of creating a card that works properly, using correct terms and proper layout. I gave everyone up until the final day of submissions to fully edit any card they were submitting. I even let people ask me if their card specifically had anything off about it. My goal here was to help them create their card as it would be inside of Gods Unchained. I did not give any advice on how to change any effect they originally had on the card, only how that specific effect would read. For example, one person had a card that had an Empower effect that gave a Roar ability. I pointed out that Empower acts the same as Roar if you word it properly, making the Roar redundant. Anyway, moving on. I gave some lenience to misworded cards that would probably still play properly in-game. But there were two cards that stood out to me as fully unplayable in the game as is. They tie at the bottom of the list. Wonder Woman the Deflector and Yugi the Master Duel. Both cards are incredibly interesting, but when I tried to pin down what they would do as written on the card, it proved difficult. Starting with Wonder Woman. I will first note this is a spell, not a creature, which is odd for a card that is supposed to be Wonder Woman herself. Next, the card says, when this card is in your hand, it stops one hand disruption effect from your opponent, then casts and deals one damage to each creature and one damage to your opponent's god. Currently, the term hand disruption is not defined in Gods Unchained, and when I talked with other people, each person had a different idea exactly what it meant. For example, if your opponent wants to deck you out by forcing you to draw a card, is that hand disruption from your opponent? If they play Ludia's Deception, would this card stop the first part and then allow you to draw a card? Or does it counter the entire card itself? Is Sneak Peek hand disruption? Along with these questions, I also believe there are less than 25 cards that would fall under hand disruption effects outside of ones that let your opponent draw. Also note, the creator of the card told me that if you cast the card for zero mana, it has no effect at all. It would simply go to the void to free up space in your hand, making it a dead card against most gods outside of deception. Hand traps are a very interesting concept, but I don't believe this one hit the mark on effect or wording. For these reasons, I cannot rank this card above being tied for last. The other card that seems incredibly interesting but highly unplayable is Yugi Boy. A 1-mana one 1-1 one, one creature that reads, at the start of the game, move this card to the top of your deck. If your god has 10 health or less, select the card you want to draw in your deck, then draw it. After life, shuffle this creature into your deck. I have no issues with the mana cost or it being a 1-1. One, one. I believe for what they are trying to do, the stats are fine. My first issue with this specific card is that I believe it should be a mythic rarity. No other rarity of card moves itself at the start of a game. My second and much larger issue is that the card would never actually work as intended. The effect that adds it to your hand at the start of the game is the same effect that lets you draw the card if you have 10 or less health. The effect only triggers at the start of the game when you have 30 health. It does not trigger each time you draw this card or when you cast it. If they made the second effect a roar, it would have improved this card a lot. I would also like to point out, if you don't plan on casting the card until you have 10 or less life, the ability that adds it to your hand is a dead ability. You would have it in your hand as a dead card until you lose 20 health, assuming you don't gain any life during the game. It's simply counterintuitive. And for those reasons, this card is also tied for last. Moving on, we have some cards that could function in the game, but severely needed an edit for me to rank them any higher. In 10th place, we have I'm Batman. 
Using art from the 90s cartoon, something I grew up watching, this is a neutral 3-mana 2-4 that reads, Regen 1, Armor 1. At the end of your turn, give it hidden for one turn. Creatures killed by I'm Batman are shuffled back into their owner's deck. Again, I wish this creator came to me for advice on how to make the card look more like a finished in-game card. I decided to let the spelling of armor pass, since it could be a dialect thing. However, in GU, keywords are presented in alphabetical order, and on their own line of text. So armor should come first, then regen, and then on a completely new line, the rest of the text. Also, comparing this card to Shadow of Lethanon, the card should not refer to itself as it, at least not without establishing you are talking about the card first. Every other instances of the word it in GU comes after they define what it is. It should read, at the end of your turn, give this creature hidden for one turn. And honestly, including for one turn is not needed, since it happens every turn, but that's neither here nor there. They continue with the next effect by not starting it on a new line, but tacking it on to the end of the first effect. Now, I do so love the effect for I'm Batman. The creator mentioned it played into the entire Batman puts people in jail, then they later break out again theme. However, the word killed does not actually show up anywhere in Gods Unchained on an effect, so the wording would need to be changed. But even if we assume what the card does, the rest of the mentioned issues have me ranking this card much lower than I would have liked. Up next, in ninth place, we have Asta's Relentless Blitz. A 6 mana war legendary with stats of 5-8, pretty high for a 6 mana, and it reads, Roar. When this creature is summoned, it attacks all enemies in a random order. Gain plus 2 plus 2 after dealing damage. This was oddly enough the second card submitted of Asta from Black Clover. Except this isn't Asta himself, it's his Blitz? Which sounds more like a spell than a creature, but I wasn't worried about the name itself. The largest issue I had with this card was not the overwhelming stats, or the minor incorrect apostrophes. The thing I could honestly not look past was the roar starting off with when this creature is summoned. Roars trigger when you play a card from your hand, meaning they don't need that line of text. But on top of that, there are a few cards that have that phrase, but they are not roar abilities. Take Nefru, Champion of Death, for example. When you put her into play from the void, her when this creature is summoned effect activates. This miswording, paired with its high stats or low mana cost, left me with an odd feel that kept this card ranking low. Up next, we have F. Fist Ace, I guess that's how you say it. A mythic 7 mana 4 9 that reads Blitz, Overkill. When this creature is summoned, it gains plus 1 strength for each war creature in your void. I really wish this creator came to me and asked me for input before edits were over. I actually really like this card. Its effect, its overall stats. What I don't like is that he set the rarity to mythic. This is by far not a mythic card. This is a game ender legendary. Mythics are not meant to end games. They exist to create an interesting game for both players. Not to mention mythics are one ofs and allowed in any deck, so this card having an effect that only pertains to war creatures drove me a bit more bonkers when trying to rank it. I eventually left it in 8th place, as a simple swap from mythic to legendary would have removed all distaste I developed while ranking the cards. The creator actually mentioned to me that he left it at Mythic so that everyone wouldn't have access to such an OP card, but yeah. Alright, now we get into the cards that people either sought out help with wording and effects, or were properly created on their own. In the seventh spot we have Alucard level 1, a 1 mana death nether that reads Blitz, Leech, Afterlife, if you were frenzied, add an Alucard level 2 to your hand. The creator of this card went through the trouble of creating AI art for the card, then using AI to animate the art, along with using AI for a voiceover. Watch this. Releasing Control Art Restriction Systems 3, 2, 1. Pretty cool, right? He only created level 1 and level 2, but I really wish he would have told me what the final card, level 0, would have been. 
Also, in the anime, I believe they are called restraint levels, and they start at 6 and work towards 0. The creator only told me that with each level, they would all have a similar afterlife, and each stat goes up by 1 or so. The lack of specifics and not knowing what the final level would do, even after I asked them directly what its effects and stats would be, forced me to leave Alucard in this spot. Okay, moving on, we have the 6th place card. The Shield Hero Nafumi. I think I'm saying that right. When designing this contest, I wanted the highest recognizable characters possible, but so many people kept designing cards for lesser known characters, or unnamed characters at all, from random series and animes. I eventually broke down and allowed main characters from lesser known media. This is one that I knew nothing about, but as I spoke with the creator, I learned about the Shield Hero. Apparently, he has the ability to gain the traits of any enemies he defeats, and that is reflected in the card's effect. Being a 6-mana legendary light creature, and having the stats of 310, it reads, Frontline, can't attack, steal the keywords and effects of any creature that is destroyed on the same turn it was damaged by this creature. This is a very interesting effect, and while talking with the creator, their desire was to have everything the destroyed card had move to this card, other than their strength and toughness. So positive and negative effects would transfer, even effects granted by other cards. Some of the confusing things were when I asked, what if this card has armor 3, and then it kills a creature with armor 1? Would they stack, or would it now only have armor 1, or would it just keep armor 3? Their reply was along the lines of, it would say Armor 3 and Armor 1, but not say which it is, and just let people find out if they stack in-game or not. This was highly concerning to me, along with the fact that it would gain all effects without limit. This card essentially shuts down your opponent unless they have an answer quickly or a way around it. I am certain giving it the right or wrong set of effects could also create an infinite loop, thus breaking the game as it is. While it would be fun to see in action, I could not imagine this card would actually be fun in the game itself. For that, it barely breaks into the sixth spot. Hmm, okay. Here we have a set of characters from yet another anime I've never heard of. Noah and Mio. A four-mana neutral legendary 2-7 human that reads, After a creature is healed, give plus one plus one to a creature in your hand. Roar, if you have five or more creatures on the board and seven cards in your hand, equip lucky seven and deal three damage to each enemy creature. Along with this card, the creator actually designed lucky seven as well. This is a zero one relic that reads, Roar and ability, obliterate an enemy creature with nine mana or less if you have six friendly creatures on the board. This was their original submission, but I did not allow it as this was not a well-known character, nor was it the main character from the random anime. So they designed a card that equips this card, and I honestly do like Noah and Milo. There is no flaws in the wording of the card. The sword has some issues with wording, but I didn't deduct points for that. This card earned 5th place because, while I do like the ability to pump things in your hand, this specific effect can get really out of hand. Eh? Eh? Oh, pff. For 4 mana, I feel it does a lot and has really high stats to boot. Which also leads me to point out that the relic's broken. Being able to remove any threat you face outside of cards with hidden, short of them having relic removal, which is much more common but not necessarily in every deck, this card is quite unstoppable. 5th place is by no means low ranking and this would be an extremely fun card to have in-game, even if you don't get the roar off, and just play it as an early beat stick that pumps things in your hand. Next up, we have the fan favorite, Wolverine, Weapon X. A 4-mana Nature Legendary 4-4 that reads, Blitz, Regen 2, when this creature is healed, gain plus 1 plus 1. Empower 2, gain plus one plus one, and this creature attacks a random valid enemy creature, and if that creature dies, attack another random valid enemy creature. At first, this card seemed to fit Wolverine amazingly, and during initial rankings, I had this card in first place. 
but the longer I looked at it, the more things started to stand out. In my opinion, healing doesn't make Wolverine stronger. If anything, taking damage does, and that leads to his Berserker mode. Also, he shouldn't gain permanent stats from healing, just go back to full health. I would also like to note, I tested in-game with things that could force an attack. If you empower this card, then try to attack with its blitz afterward, you do not have an available attack left. It didn't exactly hurt the ranking, it was just something I wanted to point out since I did go through the trouble of testing it. One more minor thing, the word end right here should be then. It's a small point, but did stand out to me a little. Not enough to drop it so low on its own, but yeah, the more I examined this card, the less it felt like Wolverine to me. I would like to mention this is AI art again. This had no effect on the ranking, just yeah. Okay, before we break into the top three, I would like to ask which of the cards previously mentioned are your favorite? Which card was I too harsh on, too lenient, and if they were all in game, which one do you think would command the highest price? That will be a fun argument. Okay, first up, in third place, here comes Mercy, Guardian Angel. Heroes never die! A two mana, neutral legendary, 2 2 Aether. The text box reads Backline, Roar, heal each friendly character for two, Ability, summon a creature from your void. This card is well thought out for what the character does, and I imagine would see play in almost every deck that could protect her. That being said, the reason she is only third and not higher is simply the fact that I believe she is too strong as is. The creator, after seeing they were ranked third, said they felt that the stats were a bit strong as well. They thought perhaps a three or four mana cost would have been better. My personal opinion is the ability might have done better with a slight change, something along the lines of summon the top creature from your void. But overall, Mercy is really well written with fitting abilities. The runner-up is the first Asta submitted. Asta Demon Form. A 5 mana death card, which I honestly mistook for deception for so much longer than I'd like to admit. This epic 2-5 nether reads, Ward. At the start of your turn, draw an additional card. Then obliterate a card from your hand and a random card from your opponent's hand. This feels like a strong card, but not overly strong as it has to survive a turn with only ward to protect it. There are many situations where you never get the effect off, and the effect happening on your turn prevents it from creating a frustrating game state that the original annoying bureaucrat created, where your opponent would never get a card to play if their hand was empty at the start of their turn. This is a solid card that I found no flaws in. I could very much so see this card in Gods Unchained with little to no edits. Finally, we come to first place. But first, I would again love to say thank you to Loot Rush for helping me make this competition possible. Well, at least helping me make the prizes much more enticing. Be sure to check them out for all your rental needs. Free for a limited time. Details in the description. Okay, okay. The winner is Asterix, the Gaulish Warrior. I have never actually heard of this character myself. Being in the USA, there is almost no media of him. But with a little research, I found out that he is really large overseas. He's been around since the 1950s or so as a comic book, and since then has had several cartoons and live action movies, the most recent of which was released in May of 2023. I kind of want to compare him to the antics of Bugs Bunny, but with slightly more plot he has to follow. Anyway, as for a Gods Unchained card, he is a 4 mana legendary war viking with the stats of 3-2, and reads, Blitz, Roar, deal 2 damage to each enemy creature, if you are frenzied, summon a 1-1 Dogmatix. The creator told me Dogmatix is a 1-1 with no text at all. I looked over this card many times, looking for a flaw, a reason it cannot be first place. I wanted to subject it to as much criticism and critiquing as possible, but I found no flaw. This fits the domain it's in really well. The creature type is accurate. It's not insanely busted as a card. Yes, it would be used in nearly every war deck, but there are a handful of cards that already are. Asterix seems like a fun character, and I'm glad to know he exists now. Congratulations to each of the winners, and thank you to everyone who entered. 
I did enjoy seeing all of your creativity in action, even if I was harsh with my rankings. Giveaways and contests are fun, but also slightly stressful, so I might shy away from them for a while. Or I might not, who knows. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, or night, or whenever it is that you're watching this. Enjoy.